I'm sure you are familiar with the Warsaw Uprising, where the Poles rose up against the Nazis in 1944. But did you know that the Czechs did a similar thing in their capital? In the very last days of World War II in Europe. And did you know that when the Prague Uprising started, Hitler was already dead and Berlin was taken by the Soviets. So why did the Czechs start to rebel at this point? Is what you're gonna find out today. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history on location. Like right now, I'm in front of the monument that commemorates the Prague Uprising. If you find these on location videos interesting, and especially these videos about these forgotten battles during the Second World War, well, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you can support me so I can make better, cooler, and more awesome content for you via Patreon or via PayPal. The links are in the description. Oh yeah, super thanks is also an option. Germany occupied the Czech lands in March 1939. Czechoslovakia was no more. And the Czech lands were called from now on the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. The Nazis introduced a wartime focused economic system regarding social development. The forced labor regime played a crucial role in Germany and the protectorate later involving into a forced assignment of work. The Czech lands were very vital for the German war industries. The Germans they set up a Jewish ghetto in Terezin, also known as Theresienstadt, and from there many Jews were deported to the death camps. From January 1942 to October 1944, mass deportations took place and the majority of the 118,300 Czech Jews perished in the gas chambers. Thousands of Roma and Sinti were also deported, of which most were murdered also. Slovakia had become a Nazi puppet state under Josef Tiso. But from the spring of 1944, the Slovaks realized that their pro-Axis Republic was not going to last as the Soviets advanced towards their country. Now, they started a revolt which became known as the Slovak National Uprising, which was eventually crushed as the German armies took over Slovakia. Nevertheless, the Red Army conquered the country and reached Bratislava in April 1945 and from there they advanced towards Prague, the Czech capital. The Slovak National Uprising resulted in a new intensification of activities of resistance forces in the Protectorate. From September to October, parachutists were dropped in the area to organize resistance, but they were not able to organize an effective resistance force against the Nazi occupiers. Though the partisans did not succeed in organizing a unified staff due to the constant pressure of the occupiers and increased concentration of German troops and the movement of the front line, they did in various places influence the rebellion and the liberation of Moravia and Bohemia. Towards the end of 1945, the front line moved towards Prague. The Red Army advanced towards Prague and within its ranks were soldiers of the 1st Czechoslovak Army Corps, which were Czechoslovaks that fought alongside the Red Army. From the west, the Americans were ready to push into the Czech lands from Germany. The Prague uprising was carried out by the Czech resistance. Now, resistance in the Czech lands already occurred from 1939, but from 1940, it got a more organized form. Organized resistance began to take shape in the beginning of 1940, where a central resistance body was formed, the Central Committee of Home Resistance, the UVOD. This body was recognized by the Czech government in exile that was led by Edvard Benesch. The Communist Party, the KSC, also developed an underground organization. So why did the Czechs actually started to launch an uprising at this point? I mean, by May 1945, it was more than clear that Germany was going to lose the war. Well, firstly, the Czechs had suffered under the German occupation. People were deported to concentration camps, there was forced labor, not to mention the brutal reprisals that had occurred. The Czechs wanted to take a stand against their occupier and liberate parts of their own country. Secondly, as the Soviets were approaching the city, the Czech resistance hoped to coordinate their attacks together with the Red Army so the Germans could be driven out and therefore avoid grave destruction to Prague. And finally, 
there were political factors. They wanted to establish a democratic government in Czechoslovakia after the war. The resistance leaders hoped that their participation in the liberation would give them a voice in the post-war government and enable them to shape the future of their country. On the 4th of May 1945, two Czech radio announcers of the city's official radio started to speak only in Czech and played forbidden Czech songs. Fighting between the SS and Czech police and civilians broke out near the radio station around noon, prompting the following from the broadcasters at 12.33 p.m. Everyone to the Czech radio station! They are firing at Czech people! Come here immediately! Come help us! Underground leaders responded with their own calls to arms. Then Prague exploded. Wehrmacht and SS troops only held small parts of Prague, but they did outnumber and outgun the Czechs. Around 30,000 armed Czech civilians fought against 37 to 40,000 German troops supported by tanks and artillery. The German planes dropped bombs on the city, barricades were erected, and street battles took place in various parts of the city. The Czech insurgents were supported by the Czech police and government troops. They also found an ally that had switched sides. Some 20,000 troops of the pro-Axis Russian Liberation Army decided to take up arms against the Germans. Andrei Vlasov was a Soviet commander that was captured near Leningrad in 1942. While being interned, he wrote a letter to the German authorities proposing a pro-Axis Russian formation. In November 1944, Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler promoted Vlasov to full general and gave him control of 45,000 Russian Axis troops. Vlasov created the Russian People's Liberation Committee, the KONR. This happened in German-occupied Prague, where he issued his Prague Manifesto. Only months before, ROA soldiers had been fighting against Czech partisans and had been hunting down Jews. But now, they were fighting alongside the Czech resistance fighters against the Germans. SS troops made their way from outside Prague to the city to help their trapped comrades. They left a trail of death and destruction and fired randomly at civilians on the streets. They also carried out brutal reprisals and massacres, for example, one near the Masaryk station. They also captured and shot Czech resistance fighters and used civilians as living shields. Armed Czechs, they rounded up Germans and in some cases killed them. The American forces, which had liberated Pljen, made no attempt to help the Czechs. Eisenhower had agreed that Soviet troops should liberate Prague. But Soviet forces south of the city under General Belov made no attempt to help the Czechs and the new Kosice government also ignored the uprising. Fighting ended on the 8th of May when the German forces surrendered. According to historian Chet Bryant, 3,700 Czechs had died and almost 3,000 wounded. In other regions, 2,000 Czechs had died as a result of the fighting since May 1st. How many Germans died is not certain because after the uprising, the bodies of the dead Germans were quickly buried outside the city. Most likely, it's above 1,000. On May 9th, the Soviets arrived in the city and received a great welcome. Czech resistance fighters now started to hunt down remaining Germans as well as Czech collaborators. Many German women were assaulted by Czechoslovak and Red Army troops. Jailers and prisoners had reversed roles. As a Czechoslovak army commander reminded his troops the following month, the German has remained our irreconcilable enemy. Don't stop hating the Germans. Be tough in dealing with the Germans. The German women and the Hitler youth are also complicit in the crimes of the Germans. Be uncompromising in your dealings with them. With World War II over, the Germans were expelled from the Czech lands. And in some cases, this led to mass murder. One example was the Bruno Death March. If you want to learn about the German expulsions after the Second World War, click right here. Also made a video about the Warsaw Uprising, click right here. I want to thank you for watching. See you later.